Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. That's July 26th, 2020. Morning prayer begins on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Vanity, found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And now, let us read together. The psalm appointed for today, Psalm 128, which you will find on page 783 of your prayer book. Psalm 128, page 783. Happy are they who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive shoots round your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion. The Lord, may he see, pardon me, and may you see, the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. And now, the first reading for proper 12. It is a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 29, verses 15 through 28. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? 
Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, let us read together the first song of Isaiah, found on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, you inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now... For the second reading, a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. One moment, please. Matthew 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, when someone found and hid, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. In finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will, the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire. There, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together the song of Zechariah, Zechariah, which you will find on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forefathers 
and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give you, to give people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now the prayers which begin on page 97. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now, the collect of the day, the collect for proper twelve. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now, let us pray for those in need. Let us pray for all who are sick for those who are lonely, for those in any kind of trouble or despair. And let us give thanks for the many blessings we enjoy as God's children and as members of this Christian community. Please remember in your prayers our nation during this time of difficulty, especially for an end to racism and violence, for restraint, on the part of our leaders, that they may seek justice and peace. For all those who suffer from or are in special danger of contracting COVID-19, for their loved ones and all who mourn the loss of loved ones, for the All Saints community, especially with thanksgiving that Jay, our new rector, has arrived 
and is finally with him. Let us remember all those in our parish who are sick or have special needs. Let us uh, remember Francis, our deacon, in Thanksgiving as he continues to heal following successful surgery for his tremors. Christy Allen's mother who has health issues. For Linda Vanderlein as she recovers from surgery. And Bobby Gaunt as she mourns the loss of Bob. Don Ollendorf who is continuing to deal with issues related to arrhythmia. For Nancy Parker and her spouse, Barb Yushan. For Eve, John and Cindy Fulvenweider's daughter, as she uh, is recovering from surgery. For Wilma, shock, suffering from knee problems. Nancy Gamby's daughter, Leanne Armstrong. For the lay and clergy leaders of our diocese during this challenging time. For Wayne and Donna, also from Marilyn Bambaro, let us uh, stop for a moment just to remember anyone whom I have forgotten or anyone else for whom you would like prayers or thanksgivings offered at this time. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.